right, geometry kids. Uh, my last class that was just in here was begging, I, whining, I mean asking for me to do some of these uh, constructions of parallelograms. Uh, so I'm going to try to do four of them really quick here before the end of the day. All right. Uh, in all of my parallelogram constructions, I think it's going to be easiest to say, let's just start with an L shape because they can all be done this way and that gives you some level of consistency. All right. The first one we're going to do is, we're going to do this one. I'll leave these on every page so you can come back and see what these are for. We're going to do one by this method. Okay. Uh, so I need to make sure that I have a side down here that's the same length as a side up here. I can transfer that length using the compass. Ah, oh, come on. All right, sorry. Okay, I need to be that long. It needs to be that distance away from this point. So it has to be somewhere on this arc. Okay, that will ensure that this top side is the same as the bottom. Then I also need it to be this distance away from this point. So let's copy this length. Stab there. Make it that big. Okay. So guess where my point goes? It goes right there. Now I'm going to cheat and not use a ruler because this would be, this is way faster if I do this and just go, you know what? Straight line. <laughs> straight line. Okay, you can do it with a straight edge. Great. Okay, second one. We're going to do one that, well, it's, it's not really very much different to do the opposite angles and do the, um, the construct parallel, so or sorry, like opposite sides parallel. So this is kind of somewhere in between. It's kind of like this. It's kind of equivalent to doing, I think. I mean, you've you've shown it's a parallelogram. Yeah, uh, it's kind of like we're constructing this, but because of the angles, we're, because of the way we're doing parallel, we're kind of ensuring certain, or we're doing it by ensuring certain angles are congruent. Whoops, so not that. Uh, we're ensuring certain angles are congruent in order to, in order to make parallel in the first place. So. It's kind of like we're doing both of these, really. So if we ask you to do it by angles opposite and congruent, you would use this method. If we're asking you to do it by opposite sides parallel, you could still use this method. OK, first of all, uh, I, what I want to do basically is copy. Uh, I'll show you up on here in my little plan. I'm going to copy an angle here to be equivalent to that angle up there. So I'm going to copy this same angle in three places. So in one place it's going to be corresponding, in the other place it's going to be uh, AIA. So I need that angle down here. The angle down here is going to be supplementary to the one inside, and the angle down here, this angle up there, is congruent to these other two by sort of SSI and by the um, congruent opposite angle properties. So the first thing I'll do is I'll take my ruler and I'll extend this side so I know what that angle is. Um, that's great. And then I'll copy that angle everywhere. Copy those angles in both those places. So. To copy angles, I'll make this a little smaller. You know what to do, right? You stab at the corner. Oh, come on, I can't get that to fall right there. Uh, I draw a rainbow across both sides. I draw a similar one up here where that's supposed to stop. Great. And since I'm doing two copies at once, I'll just do this one too. Make it. Oh, come on, don't right click on me. Yeah, I make that big enough over there. Okay, then I measure the span of how big it, how big the angle is open at that radius, which is something like this. Okay, copy that span here, and again, I'm doing two at once, but it's the same process in both. Great, and then I just make straight lines with my ruler. So that top side of the parallelogram is going to go across here. Starts at that point, cheat ruler, and goes here. I don't know how long to make it, I just know it goes that angle. And the point that starts here goes around at that angle. So there we go, parallelogram finished. Next method I'm going to use is going to be the property that ensures parallelogramness by virtue of having uh, diagonals that bisect each other. Again, I'm going to start with the L shape, although I really like another way to do this that doesn't involve the L shape. Well, that's one diagonal of my parallelogram already. I know my other diagonal has to come across here and bisect it and also be bisected by this one that's already here. So everything's about bisecting, right? So I need to know the midpoint of that diagonal. So it's like I'm constructing a median, actually. I need to do the perpendicular bisector of this side simply to locate the midpoint. So we're used to seeing this, right? That's pretty good. Great. That's enough information to show me how to locate a midpoint. That means this is the midpoint. 
So my diagonal starts here. It's going to go through that midpoint, and it's just going to go some amount up there till we hit the other corner of the uh, parallelogram. How far do I go up here along this diagonal? Well, I have to go up here far enough so that I know that this is the midpoint of that segment. So I just need this length on this side of the midpoint to be the same as this length on the other side. And I know how to copy lengths. Anybody else getting goosebumps yet? Oh, come on. Right clicker. Don't do that to me. All right. So it's going to be about that long. Is that right? And not quite close enough. Okay. That length has to be the same on this side. So it's, I call this one the double median. I, mean, I, I, I made my L into a triangle. And then I found the median of that triangle to the new diagonal. And then I just doubled that median. So now I'm really sure that that's a midpoint in both ways. It's a midpoint here because of the perpendicular bisector construction. And then it's a midpoint here because I copied the half diagonal once again. Last new one here is really that, OK, let's try to construct this by showing that I'm going to have to construct uh, one set of parallel sides that are also congruent. So the parallel, again, is going to have to be by um, copy an angle. Let's, uh, just to make it slightly different, let's copy an angle slightly differently. I want to see where the end of that is. Is that legal? It's really the same line. I just want to be able to see what that is. I'm going to copy this obtuse angle up here so that I know I have parallels. So let's do that. Let's make it smaller. It's really big. OK, copy an angle here. Uh, measure the span. So it should be about that big. Also up here. Now, mine's a little bit off. I know that. I had to do that just so I could see where it ended. If you had a real pencil, you could do it probably quicker. Then I make a straight line. So I know this is parallel. Actually, I know it's a little bit off. <laughs> Uh, how far do I go? Well, I go to make sure that those two things are congruent. So I just copy this length. Eh, about there. That looks pretty good. This construction is already non-perfect. But you know what? It would earn full credit in my class. All right, then that's where I know this ends. So I've ensured that those two lengths are the same and that they're parallel by corresponding angles. Uh, last one. This one doesn't require um, that I start with a um, L. If we just said construct a, a parallelogram any old way you want, I like using this method for this way. Uh, and I have a couple minutes left, so I'm going to go ahead and explain this one. This one's really cute. Okay. I'm going to do it this way. Uh, basically, this will be the case. Whenever, if I could make a segment and I could be sure that it's the midpoint of two separate segments. If it's a midpoint here, and if it's the midpoint here, if I could just construct that first, I could construct the ends of those things and to be sure it's a parallelogram. Now this one looks kind of perpendicular. It doesn't have to. It could be like this, and it could be like that. As long as I'm sure it doesn't look good. As long as I'm sure that's true, and that's true, then I know the ends of these things make a parallelogram. So I'm going to do that this way. Uh, let's start with any random point. So this is kind of weird. We're starting with, with um, a point that's actually marked, and I'm going to stab just a point um, that's not part of a segment or anything. That's going to be the center of everything. That's going to be the center point of my, of my parallelogram. Draw a random circle. Change the radius. Same center. Draw another random circle. Now, any diameters I draw of these circles are going to are going to intersect at that midpoint. So let's draw a diameter. Get my ruler cheater tool again. Let's draw a diameter like this. Goes through that point. So I know that is the midpoint of that thing, of that uh, diameter I just drew, and a diameter of the other circle that intersects right there. I mean, a diameter will also intersect right there. So there we go. Those two segments I'm sure of now. This segment is the same length as this segment. You know, to the midpoint. And the radius of the little circles, those have to work out too. So I know that if I connect the dots like this, I have a parallelogram on my hands because it is sure to have diagonals that bisect each other. I like that one, but it doesn't start with an L, so I put it at the end. OK, enjoy. Hope you liked watching this as much as I liked making it. Good luck on the quiz.